In this lesson, we're looking at estimating with powers and roots. Because we're estimating, we don't need to get the exact answer. We just need to get something that's close. In the first example, we need to estimate the value of 3.5 squared, or 3.5 to the power of 2. We're only estimating, so we don't want to work out the exact value either using a calculator or a written method that you might know of from lesson N to A. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to spot that 3.5 is in between 3 and 4. And I'm going to look at what 3 squared is. 3 squared means 3 times 3, and that's 9. And 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. Now, you might be tempted to say that 3.5 squared is going to be exactly halfway between 9 and 16, because 3.5 is exactly halfway between 3 and 4. Unfortunately, that's not true. It is approximately true, however, when you're dealing with consecutive numbers like this. In fact, when you get to lesson A6b, you'll be able to prove that the true answer is actually 0.25 less than the number that is halfway between these two. Anyway, we don't need to be that precise at all. We're just going to look for something that is roughly halfway between these two, so something in the region of 12 or 13. I'm going to write 3.5 squared is approximately equal to 12. And the symbol I'm using there is a squiggly looking equal sign, and that's saying that my answer is only approximate, it's only an estimate. Moving on to part B, we've got 3.8 squared this time. Now 3.8 is still between 3 and 4. So when we square this, we're going to get something that is in between 3 squared and 4 squared. But this time, 3.8, you'll notice, is closer to 4 than to 3. So a sensible estimate would be a number that is closer to the 16. Not too close, because we're not really at 3.9 or anything like that. So I would make an estimate of 14 in this case. Let's just check that the answer we've got is sensible. 3.8 is bigger than 3.5, so 3.8 squared should be bigger than 3.5 squared, and 14 is indeed bigger than 12, so our answer is sensible looking. Moving on to part C, we've got 6.5 squared. So what we're going to do is look at 6 squared, which is 6 times 6, that's 36, and 7 squared, 7 times 7, which is 49. Now, 6.5 squared is going to be approximately halfway between 6 squared and 7 squared, or halfway between 36 and 49. Remember, it's not going to be exactly halfway between. The difference between these two numbers is 13. Half of 13 is 6.5, so if we were to add 6.5 onto this, we would get 42.5. So I'm going to say our answer is approximately 42. If you say it's approximately equal to 43, that's fine as well. It's only a rough estimate. Moving on to part D, we've got 6.3 squared. Now 6.3 is between 6 and 7, but it's a bit closer to 6 than to 7. So we want an answer that's a little bit closer to 36. And also, we want the answer to be below 42, because 6.3 is less than 6.5. So 6.3 squared has to be less than 6.5 squared. So I'm going to pick a number that's between 36 and 42. And because 6.3 is actually a little bit closer to 6.5, I'll pick one that's a little bit closer to 42. So I'll estimate the answer is 40. If you check the true answer on your calculator, you'll find that it's 39.69, which, if you round to the nearest whole number, is 40. Looking at this example, we've got 2.1 cubed. We know that 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2.1 cubed 
is going to be a little bit greater than that. So I'm going to estimate that the answer is approximately equal to 9. In example f, we're moving on to square roots now. And we'll notice that 56 is not a square number. So the square root of that is not going to be a nice whole number. What I've got to do is think of the square numbers that I do know. What are the ones that are just above and just below 56? Well, I know that 7 squared is 49 and 8 squared is 64. And that means the square root of 49 is 7. Remember, square rooting is the inverse of squaring. And the square root of 64 is going to be 8. And we can see now that 56 is in between 49 and 64. It's about halfway between those two. So the square root of 56 is going to be roughly halfway between 7 and 8. Again, it's not going to be exact, but it's good enough for an estimate. So because 56 is between 49 and 64, I'm going to say the square root of 56 is going to be between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64, and we know what those are. So I'm going to estimate an answer of 7.5. In part G, we've got to find the square root of 35. I know that 5 squared is 25 and 6 squared is 36. And that means that the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 36 is 6. I'm doing the same thing in this example as I did in example F. I'm looking for the square numbers above and below 35. Those are 25 and 36. And we know what the square roots of those are and 35 is a lot closer to 36. So the square root of 35 is going to be a lot closer to the square root of 36. So it's going to be between five and six, but closer to six. I'm going to estimate an answer of 5.9. I'm going to follow the same method for example h. 83 is between 81, which is nine squared, and 100, which is 10 squared. So rearranging that, I get the square root of 81 is 9, and the square root of 100 is 10. I can see from this that 83 is a lot closer to 81, so the square root of 83 is going to be a lot closer to the square root of 81 than to the square root of 100. So I'm going to estimate an answer of 9.1. To become fast at doing these kinds of questions, you need to be able to recall your square numbers really quickly. We're moving on to the trickiest examples now where we've got cube roots and a fourth root and a fifth root to look at. Looking at example i, we want to find the cube root of 70. For these, it helps to know your cube numbers, particularly the smaller ones. I know that four cubed is 64. That's 4 times 4 times 4. And that means the cube root of 64 is 4. Remember, the cube root is the inverse or opposite of cubing or raising to the power of 3. I also know that 5 cubed is 125. So the cube root of 125 is 5. Because 70 is between 64 and 125, I know that the cube root of 70 is going to be in between these two. In other words, it's going to be between 4 and 5. And because 70 is a lot closer to 64 than 125, I know that the cube root of 70 is going to be a lot closer to the cube root of 64. So the answer is going to be between 4 and 5, and it's going to be closer to 4 than to 5. I'm going to estimate an answer of 4.1. Looking at j, I've got the cube root of 50. And I know that 3 cubed is 27. That's the cube number just below 50. And 4 cubed is 64. We've already worked that out above. 
And this means that we've got the cube root of 27, which is 3, and the cube root of 64, which is 4. Because 50 is between 27 and 64, I know that the cube root of 50 is going to be between the cube roots of these numbers. So my answer is going to be between 3 and 4. It's going to be 3 point something. I know that 50 is a bit closer to 64 than it is to 27. So I need an answer that is a little bit closer to the 4 than to the 3. It's not going to be too close to 4. It's not like we've got the cube root of 63 or 62 or something really, really close to 64. So I'm going to estimate 3.6 or 3.7. In example K, I want to find the fourth root of 17. For this, it helps to know your fourth powers or to be able to work them out quickly. 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is 16. And that means that the fourth root of 16 is going to be 2. Because 17 is so close to 16, we can see that the fourth root of 17 is going to be very close to the fourth root of 16. So it's going to be 2. In fact, it's going to be just a little bit bigger than 2. Just to make sure, let's check what the next power of 4 is. That would be 3 to the power of 4. That's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and that is 81. So that means that the fourth root of 81 is 3. Looking at those two numbers now, your fourth powers, 16 and 81, you'll see that 17 really is so much closer to 16 than to 81. That means a sensible estimate would actually be 2 rather than something like 2.1. If you check on your calculator, you'll see that the answer is about 2.03 or 2.0 to one decimal place. Finally, we're looking at the fifth root of 30. I know my powers of two and two to the power of five is 32. That means the fifth root of 32 is two. The fifth root of 30, therefore, is going to be just a little bit less than this. It's gonna be something just under two. To get an idea of how close to 2 the answer is going to be, however, let's take a look at the previous fifth power. We need to look at 1 to the power of 5. 1 to the power of 5 is just 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. And that means the fifth root of 1 is 1. Looking at these fifth roots now, we've got 1 and 32. 30 is so much closer to 32 that our answer to this is going to be really, really close to 2. So I'm going to go again for an answer of approximately equal to 2 rather than something like 1.9 because I think that 30 is so much closer to 32 than it is to 1. If you check this on your calculator, you will get an answer of 1.97 which, if you round to one decimal place, gives you 2.0. So 2 is a better estimate than 1.9. Again, it's not the end of the world if you do write 1.9. It's still a reasonable estimate. The main skill in this lesson is to pick the easy powers or roots just above and just below the one you're trying to estimate. If you do this, you're going to narrow your range of answers to two consecutive numbers. For example, you know your answer is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3, let's say. At this point, you need to use your judgment to decide where in that range you think your answer is going to be.